Yo, what's good? My name's Kang, and in this video, I'm gonna be telling you how $500 a month can change your life. It's no secret that investing is important and we should be investing, but everyone, including me, seems to dodge the question, how much should I invest? Well, I won't beat around the bush. The answer is, as much as you can. And I know this answer sucks and I'm sorry, but honestly, it's the truth. Everyone's lives are different and everyone's goals are different. So it's hard to make a blanket statement that applies to everyone. With that being said, I do think that $500 a month is a good baseline or a good goal that everyone should strive for. And here's why. Each year, the government gives us $6,000 in contribution room for our TFSA. Coincidentally, $500 a month times 12 months is $6,000. Can you see where I'm getting at? Now, these contribution rooms are subject to change, but within the history of the TFSA, the contribution limit has always been $5,000 to $6,000 with that exception of $10,000 in one year. Now, if we invest this $500 a month and assume an average rate of return of 7% a year, after 40 years, that $500 a month will turn into $1.2 million. And what's great about using your TFSA is that investment has grown tax-free and you're able to use all that money without paying any taxes at all. The average Canadian income in 2019 from someone aged 24 to 54 was $56,000, which equates to roughly $3,600 a month after tax. By investing $500 a month, you would effectively be investing 13% of your take-home pay, which in my opinion is very reasonable, an amount that you can invest without it severely affecting your quality of life. But the real key here is consistency and time. I won't sit here and say that 40 years is a short time to invest, but you're also assuming that you're only gonna be investing $500 for your whole entire life. Assuming you progress your career and you start to make more money, you can start to invest more than the $500 a month. And by building that consistent habit earlier, you'll be already ready to accept that new payment and have a plan all worked out. For example, if instead you invested $1,000 a month and still averaged that 7% yearly rate of return, you would have $1.1 million in 30 years. If you only take one thing away from this video, I urge you to please play with a compound interest calculator. I'll leave one link below. Just play with it for like 10, 15 minutes and you can really see how you can make your money work for you. I promise that it will surprise you. Now, of course, if you can't afford to invest $500 a month, that's okay. I still think that you should invest as much as you can afford to start building that habit, no matter how small the amount is. And if you can comfortably invest more than $500, I really recommend doing that. A lot of people think that you should invest 20% of your income towards your retirement, but I really think you should look at your goals and figure out how much you can comfortably invest to meet those goals. And you may think that $500 is a lot right now, which it is. But let me ask you this, how much does your financial freedom cost? I know it sounds kind of messed up, but no one aside from you or your family really cares about you or your future. With more and more companies getting rid of defined pension plans and OAS and CPP not really giving enough, how are you going to be sure that you're going to be able to take care of yourself when you're the most vulnerable? I don't know what the future will hold, but I do know for sure that I'd rather give a, a relatively small amount like $500 a month in order to have a more optimistic look into that future. Personally, I want to achieve financial freedom pretty early on in life. So that means I'm going to be investing as much as I can afford. If you want to see what I personally invest in, you can click right here where I go over all-in-one funds.